this video, I'm going to be talking about what normal force is and how to accurately solve for it in four different situations. And I will talk about how that is closely tied to solving for the force of friction accurately as well. Okay, so let's take a look at our first scenario. We have the force of gravity pulling the box straight down. And then we have a force from the ground pushing upwards on it perpendicular to the surface, which is known as the normal force. The definition I like to give normal force is a perpendicular support force, which is probably not a widely used definition, but I think that it works pretty well for all of the situations where normal force is involved. Um, so we have this surface that is pushing up 90 degrees and that perpendicular force is called the normal force. In this case, normal means perpendicular. So we have normal force, which I'll call positive because it's in the upward direction, minus the force of gravity, which I'll call the neg negative direction because that's down. And that equals zero newtons, which would normally equal m times a, but the uh, there is no acceleration or movement in the vertical direction. So we can go ahead and say that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity. Therefore, the normal force is equal to mass of 10 kilograms times little g 9.8 and the normal force then would be equal to 98 newtons so in many cases when an object is sitting flat on a surface the fg and fn are the same value um, but that is also a misconception. It can definitely change in many cases. That's why I'm showing you different variations. And the next three do not have an FG and FN value that are the same. So for our second scenario, we have a force of gravity, which is the same FG that we just saw a second ago. And in this case, we have a larger normal force pushing upwards. The reason for that is because we have an applied force pushing downwards at an angle. So there is a Y component pushing downwards, which we'll call FA in the Y direction. And it also has a horizontal component, which we can call FA in the X direction, which we don't really need in this case um, because we're not looking for anything in X direction at this moment. Um, but I just went ahead and drew that in anyways. So in this case, your normal force is going to be larger than the first case because the normal force is supporting the regular force of gravity. And then in addition, it's getting a more downward force from this applied force. So it has to counteract two different forces. So we have the normal force going upwards. And then in the downward direction, we have that F A Y and we have that FG going down to cancel it out and make it zero newtons in the vertical direction. Now, one of the values that we're gonna have to solve for first before we go any farther is the FAY. So we're gonna do a little bit of trig. I'm gonna take this triangle over here and pull it out. And we have the 30 degree angle over here. 10 newtons is the hypotenuse, which was given to us in the problem. And then we're looking for this Y component over here. So we're gonna go ahead and use the sine of 30 degrees, because we're gonna use our opposite end over the hypotenuse of the triangle. And then multiply both sides by 10. And then our Y equals five Newtons. All right, so we have pretty much everything we need now. We have the normal force that is equal to FA plus FG. So we can go ahead and add this to the other side. And then that is just five Newtons plus that 98 Newtons from the original problem that we solved for already. So the normal force in this case is equal to 103 Newtons, a little bit greater than the first one because the ground now has to support two different forces, the FG and the FAY. Now for our second scenario over here, I'm not gonna really go through the entire thing because it's so similar uh, to this one over here. The only difference would be the Y component, and this one is an FT, a uh, force of tension from a string. So the FT Y component is upwards and we still have an FT X component, just not one we're concerned about at the moment. And then we still have our FG 
and Fn. In this case, the Fn is going to be a little bit smaller because it has the force of tension helping it in the upward direction. So for this one, if we wanted to write it out, then we would just go ahead and say the Fn plus the Fty minus Fg equals zero. So in this case, we want to move a few things around and we'll leave the Fn on the left side and then we're going to add Fg to the other side. So we have Fg on the right side and then minus Fty from both sides. So it'd be minus Fty on the right side. So in this case, instead of taking five plus 98, it would be 98 minus five Newtons and that would equal 93. So in this case, my force vector is going to be a little bit less because it's getting some help from that vertical force of tension pulling upwards. Therefore, the floor does not have to support quite as much force because it's being helped out by force of tension. All right, now for our final case, we have an object on a ramp. We have a force of gravity pulling it straight down as usual. And we're working in the perpendicular and parallel directions. So if we wanted a perpendicular component, it's gonna be right over there. And we'll go ahead and call that FGY. And then if we wanted a parallel component, it's gonna point downward like this, and it's gonna be called FGX. And then this 30 degree angle over here is gonna to translate to that angle right over there. And here is gonna be a 30 degree angle in our triangle. So in this case, we want to use the cosine of 30 degrees. And before I do that, I'm gonna finish my force diagram and show that we have this normal force pointing perpendicular upwards 90 degrees from this ramp. And let's go back to our triangle now. We have the cosine of 30 degrees. I wanna use cosine because in this case, we wanted the adjacent side to our 30 degree angle. And that's FGY divided by the hypotenuse, which is FG. I'm going to go ahead and write 98 Newtons because I already know that FG is 98 from all of my previous problems. So then I just go ahead and multiply both sides by 98. And then my FGY comes out to 84.87 newtons so because those are the only two forces in the perpendicular direction then fn equals fgy and that is my normal force it doesn't have to hold up all 98 newtons of force like it did in the first one because as it's tilted down and allowing some of that to become fgx it's releasing some of that force on the surface and then it's making that 98 newtons come down to 84.87 newtons okay so you can see how all those variations you just want to make sure you're careful about setting up your formulas and then putting in your numbers last to see if that fn is going to vary in each of these cases now the reason why it is very closely tied to the force of friction because the force of friction is the coefficient of kinetic or static friction times the normal force. So in a lot of cases, if you solve for the normal force correctly, as long as you can get the mu value, the coefficient of static or kinetic friction, then you can correctly and accurately solve for the force of friction. So I hope that was helpful for you in looking at all these variations. Thank you for watching and listening.